السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم uh, Picking up with the legendary uh, military ideology of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم We are now on page number 444 uh, The era of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib Welcome everyone for joining us in case you have uh, missed uh, there are several uh, 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 series on the legendary military uh, legacy of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam among that is the era of sayyidina abu bakr siddiq uh, umar ibn al-khattab uthman ibn affan and now here we are with sayyidina ali ibn abi talib radiyallahu anhu 3.5.5 visiting the sick. It was narrated from Thuwair ibn Abi Fakhita that his father said, and I quote, Ali radiallahu anhu took me by the hand and said, let us go and visit Al-Hasan because he is sick. We found Abu Musa with him and Ali radiallahu anhu said, have you come to visit him because he is sick or oh, Abu Musa? Or is it just a social visit? He said, no, I am visiting him because he is sick. Ali radiallahu anhu said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, and I quote, there is no Muslim who visits a Muslim because he is sick in the morning, but 70,000 angels will send blessings on him until evening comes. And if he visits him because he is sick in the evening, 70,000 angels will send blessings upon him until morning. 3.5.6 excuse me, point six, encouraging his son Al-Hasan to give speeches. Amir al-Mu'minin said to his son Al-Hasan one day, open quote, Oh my son, why don't you give speeches so that I can hear you, end quote. He said, when I see you, I feel shy to give speeches. So Ali radiallahu anhu went where Al-Hasan could not see him. Then Al-Hasan stood up and addressed the people while Ali radiallahu anhu was listening to him and he gave an eloquent speech when he finished Ali radiallahu anhu said, offspring one of the other and Allah jalla jalaluhu hears and knows all things. 3.5 Point seven, I am not as you think. I mean, Amr ibn Murrah narrated that Abu al-Bukhtari said a man came to Ali ibn Abi Talib and praised him. But Ali had heard that the man had said something bad about him. So he said, I am not as you think and I am better than you think. 3.5.7. Eight warning against giving to whims and desires. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, Beware of giving in to whims and desires because the immediate consequences are bad and the long term consequences are worse. If you cannot get control of your whims and desires by means of warning and punishment, then try to use the method of encouragement and thinking of reward because if the deterrent and incentive and incentive come together you will subject yourself to both and you will be able to control your desires 3.5.9 making a muslim happy ali ibn abi talib radiallahu anhu said one of the means of attaining forgiveness from allah jalla jalaluhu is making your muslim brother happy 3.5.10, the most difficult of actions are three. Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, and I quote, Among the worst difficult of actions are three, allowing others to settle scores with you, remembering Allah jalla jalaluhu in all situations, and helping your brothers financially End quote. And by the way, every last one of these 
uh, I find uh, the, 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 the condition or situation to, re, to be rampant in our society today. Uh, people do not want to allow uh, the score to be settled, definitely. And people are not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any circumstances, never mind in all circumstances. And uh, speaking from one who has been helped financially, again, as we spoke on it last time, people really, you know, are in a business to hold uh, one uh, hostage with money. So this is uh, something that people are into today instead of just helping them for the sake of of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, but that's we'll move on. And uh, the 3.6 warning against serious diseases, the consequences of sin. 3.6.1. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, and I quote, the consequences of sin are having no energy for worship, a reduced livelihood, and reduced physical pleasure. End quote. It was said. What is reduced physical pleasure, Ya Amirul Mu'minin? He said he will not indulge in any permissible pleasure, but something will come to spoil it. End quote. This was encouragement and a deterrent from sin. Amirul Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu did not neglect to point out the positive consequences of reframing from sin, as he said, and I quote, Whoever wants glory without the support of a large family, offspring without having a lot of children, and independent means without wealth, let him move from the humiliation of sin to the glory of obedience, end quote. Quote, he also said, if you want to attain a position of prominence, avoid what is haram. End quote. 3.6.2 Hoping for a long life and following whims and desires, Amirul Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib delivered a sermon on the member of Kufa. He praised and glorified Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Then he said, O oh people, what I fear most for you is hoping for a long life and following whims and desires. As for hoping too long to live a long life, it makes one forget the hereafter. As for following the whims and desires, it makes one abandon the truth. Indeed, this world is coming to an end and the hereafter is starting soon. Each one of them has children, so be among the children of the hereafter and do not be among the children of this world. Because today is good deeds with no reckoning and tomorrow is for reckoning with no deeds. In other words, in the day of judgment, nobody will be able to do anything. So there's nothing. Uh, I mean, we will not have a choice. Uh, we have to abide by what is what we are subjected to on a day of judgment, unlike the world, in other words, okay? In this speech, Amirul Mu'minin pointed out two serious matters that have a great impact on people's lives. The first is hoping to live a long life because that deceives man, so he is distracted from worldly aims and ambitions which make him postpone righteous deeds and forget the hereafter. Does his effort for this world becomes great in his effort for the hereafter becomes minimal or small, minor. If every person bore in mind the fact that he is vulnerable to death at any moment, his efforts in this world will become very little, only as much as is necessary. And his efforts for the hereafter will become great because that is what will remain after death. The second matter is following whims and desires. This diverts a person and makes the highest gains in his life the attainment of his own whims and desires and the whims and desires of those under whom he works. So he forgets to the supreme Islamic goal, a goal of Al-Islam. He forgets that altogether. 
which is seeking the pleasure of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and his bounty in paradise. When the aims and goals are changed, the plan and of action changes and becomes focused on worldly matters, Iblisi, affairs and how they do their things, the aims of which do not go beyond this life. It stays right here, as you know, we've been saying for the past uh, three years now since the declaration of the Quranic revolution. It also changes relationships and ties, rightfully so which become based on worldly interests instead of faith and piety. And there are other consequences of changing goals. End quote. 3.6.3, showing off, which is very big in our American, European, Western, uh, African following, that type of thing. Doesn't matter, people are big on showing off. Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib said, and I quote, Do not do any good deed to show off, and do not refrain from doing it out of shyness. End quote. He also said, and I quote, There are three signs of the show off. He is lazy when he is alone and active when he is with other people. He does more if he is praised because of it, and he does less if he is criticized because of it. End quote. The text of Sharia described showing off as a lesser form of palo. Theism. See, Iblisis, that's it. Showing off, building all these buildings, talking about how good your community, your center, it's all a bunch of polytheism because you're showing off. That's it. Because the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, and I quote, the thing I fear most for you is less of polytheism, end quote. They said, meaning the Sahabas, what is the less of polytheism, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said, showing off. Allah will say on the day of resurrection when he will reward the people for their deeds. Go to those to whom you used to show off for and expect to get all this stuff from this worldly stuff in the world and see whether you find any reward with them. They're not able to do anything. Look at them now. End quote. It was also narrated that Shaddad ibn Aws said at the time of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we used to regard showing off a lesser polytheism, a lesser shirk, because that's exactly what it is. The deeds and actions that you're doing, the sayings that you're doing are for other than Allah, therefore people uh, to gain gratitude from them and that's associating with Allah because we're not supposed to do that. Case closed. Uh, inshallah, we will stop here on page number 447. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asma rabbik wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruka wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyul azim. Subhanak rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifuna wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.